Hey guys, Mark Singing here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video. And so tomorrow morning, or at least morning for me in the UK, potentially still this evening for you guys, depending on where you are in the USA perhaps, uh, we are going to be getting the release of the Int Tournament of Power Androids on Global. So their Dokkan Fest banner, the start of their mini celebration. Um, well actually, theirs is probably a, theirs is a full celebration because of course they have a part two LR. Uh, we'll be getting a mini celebration at the beginning of March before we go into Saiyan Day. But the Androids celebration will be starting tomorrow. Basically, if you're watching this video, as soon as it goes up, the banner is going to be out in eight and a half hours. Uh, I will be live in eight hours, getting set up, getting ready. And then, of course, we will be doing some live summons. Hopefully, you know, just like Trunks, just like Omega, I want this to be a unit that I'm able to pull very quickly and not have to spend a whole bunch of stones. Um, because hopefully, you know, for me as a creator, I going to summon for everything but I want to be able to have a lot of stones for the big hype stuff uh, and of course I'm very much looking forward to seeing what Saiyan Day is going to be but we are going to talk about this banner and the Tournament of Power androids themselves now these summon or skip videos I always you know try and highlight this at the very beginning these videos are more aimed towards people who are free to play or who don't spend a lot of money on the game because obviously the goal should be to try and be as tactical as you can with your stone usage so that you then do have stones for some of these big celebrations or important characters and you know we've seen the hype of the anniversary on jp we now know who the part one units are and how good they are been using them in the game i've been showing them off on the channel um, so the anniversary definitely is something that you want to be building up a good stockpile of stones for. And so these quote unquote filler Dokkan Fests are generally going to be skips for the most part for a lot of people who are on that lower end of the spending spectrum all the way down to free to play, of course. So first things first, the banner. Obviously, we have the two new units, the androids and their side banner unit. The androids are an interesting unit. We've talked about them a bit in a couple of videos already. Um, the basic takeaway is like their leader skill, tournament participants is an interesting category with siblings bond added in as well. But with their extra 30% being reps of Universe 7 or joined forces, they do essentially just become like the new best reps of Universe 7 lead. But there's a couple of other units you could throw onto their team potentially. Um, so that's going to be interesting, of course, for when Reps of Universe 7 has gotten all of the buffs they will be receiving um, and has then become a very solid team again. But for Global, we know that that's not going to be for a few months, right? We've already seen the STR UI Goku EZA on JP. We know AGL UI Goku and Int Blue Evolution Vegeta are going to EZA very soon as well. And of course, there is the potential for units like the physical uh, Blue Kaioken Goku and Blue Evolution Vegeta LR to get an EZA. So Tournament of Power... Uh, the team itself, right, Reps of Universe 7 specifically, uh, is getting a lot of buffs uh, from the anniversary. And by the end of the anniversary, depending on how good those EZAs are, could essentially be one of the top tier teams in the game again. And of course, that team will be made significantly better by having the androids in your box. So for this unit, it's kind of more of an investment for the future, right? Because by the time the anniversary comes to global, this unit won't have returned on a banner yet. So if you don't get them now, you're not going to have them when that Tournament of Power team gets all of its buffs. Now, when it comes to them as a unit themselves, they can be very, very good, right? With a, their unit super, as long as you have a Goku on rotation, raises all allies attack and defense by 35% for two turns. So it buffs everybody on the next rotation, which means even if you want to use them as a third slot floating unit on that upgraded reps of Universe 17, they're giving a full buff to the next turn as well, which is very good. And of course, on their unit super, they massively raise their defense, which is 100%, and they have 35% damage reduction after super bring as well with a goku on rotation they also have a scouter so they are a very very good and very useful unit now unfortunately they're not super great against aoe's but we've seen with some of the new difficult bosses like the new bosses from the new red zone on jp and the uh, what everyone's calling the blue zone right with the few stages against super class enemies none of those have aoe's so it's not like these guys are completely outclassed for all upcoming future content it's only really the aoe bosses that they're not going to do very well against so these guys could be a pretty good investment for the future um, because of how valuable they will be on some of these other teams right now their support from their passive because they are a support unit as well is to tournament participants right so it's not like you can throw them on any old team and them still be very good their super attack effect obviously affects all allies but you need a goku uh, for the unit super so that's going to be their main team and that's like i say they are 
more of an investment for the future. And then their side banner unit, these guys are not particularly good. <laughs> they greatly raise attack on super. Um, they get buffs per power of wishes or tournament participants ally on the team. So those are basically the two teams that you need to run them on. Um, they also have a stat buff and an additional attack that has a chance to become a super if you have power of wishes allies on the teams. Um, and then they are, um, they're not even a support unit, actually. For some reason, I thought they were, but I guess because the androids are, they didn't make their side banner unit a tournament participant's support. So these guys are just terrible, right? They're, um, they're from, is it Universe 2, the Ribrienne universe? Which means they don't even have their own specific category for that. So they're on Universe Survival Saga, Transformation Boost, Joint Forces. But, like, Power of Wishes and tournament participants are really the teams you're going to run them on because they're the allies that you want them to have, but they're just not particularly good, right? They don't have a lot of, they don't have high stats, they don't raise defense on super, um, so these guys are just beyond mid. Um, so, I mean, the androids are quite good, but you're definitely not going to be summoning on the banner for the side banner unit, right? Even if you do intend to pull the LR Ribrienne in part two. Now, taking a look at the banner itself, um, this is something that I think is going to be interesting because for Global, we've expected to see changes on banners like Trunks that then didn't change whatsoever, even though a lot of the featured units on his banner had been on other banners recently. Because that's one of the things I would wonder about this banner for Global, is that Kale was on the Android 21 banner, and God Goku returned on one of those sort of like filler Dokon Fest banners that was like Global exclusive towards the end of last year. Um, now, God Goku returning again would be pretty good because it does add value to the banner. He's still a top tier TUR in the game even now. Works super well with the Gogeta from the anniversary. So he's a unit that's definitely worth having and getting dupes for even if you have him already but only at 55%. Which means, of course, he would be available with coins. But I don't know if I would summon on this banner specifically to get God Goku if you don't have him. Um, obviously, if you've got no red coins and so you have no choice... Um, he does make the banner that a little bit more attractive. Path to Power Kid Goku is actually still really good as well. Uh, the tech, Kalen Khalifla, could easy A this year. So that could be an interesting buff for the future. Videl potentially this year maybe as well. Um, and then of course Kale uh, is a unit that is good, but definitely still a little bit lost in terms of needing that perfect team with perfect partners. Um, she definitely can work when you build a team around her uh, correctly but we're really just waiting for them to drop like a Dokon Fest Khalifla or something and then uh, easy a like the Tech Khalifla and STR Kale and then that team will actually slap but of course until then it's it's just a case of who knows when she's going to get those buffs right so I wouldn't summon on this banner specifically to get Kale I probably wouldn't summon on the banner specifically to get God Goku maybe try a couple of Moe's if you want God Goku and you don't have red coins but of course that is all depending on whether he is actually going to be on the banner um, because we could see that change I think the lineup for these recent Dokon Fest. We saw Omega, the banner lineup change and then put in the Carnival Goku and Gohan but I feel like I made a video predicting that that could happen because there was no other place in the schedule for those Carnival LRs to return before the anniversary. Whereas when it comes to a bunch of these other Dokon Fests, some of them have returned recently. So, you know, they might not change them or they're going to change them for some other units that are equally or even worse, I guess, when it comes to Kale, right? They could change her for units like Bardock, Turlet. I don't know if Turles has returned at all on JP for the first time. Um, but like if they took off God Goku, almost any other TUR from 2023 that they put on the banner in his place would be worse. So in a way, it's almost like we don't want the banner to change, right? Um, now we saw with Trunks, they didn't give discounts or guaranteed featured or anything like that. So I wouldn't necessarily expect that maybe as like a special treat for Global because, you know, they know Global's going through it right now because JP's got the anniversary. They did give us that special Global exclusive battle hour banner that had the Carnival Trunks and Future Gohan. Although you were a only able to do one three plus one rotation and then the banner went away. Um, but that was kind of a cool little like Global only thing that we got. So maybe, you know as an, another sort of like appeasement to the players while we uh, have to just sit and watch JP play with Broly and Gogeta, like the Squidward looking out the window meme. Um, maybe they'll give us like discounts and guaranteed featured on the final step, who knows. Now, the one thing we do know 
um, as always with these kind of things, is that we are going to get uh, tickets for the banner. So shout out to Proton, as always, for the thread about the uh, data download. Obviously, again, you can see here, as I said about the times, these re they release at 6.30 a.m. for me. I will be live at 6 a.m., so hopefully I'll see you guys there. We're also getting Awakenings and Easy A's for these GT, the GT Android 18, the Hellfighter 17, the AGL one, and then the free-to-play uh, AGL and Int 17 and 18s from the Tournament of Power Story event. Uh, there's a Dragon Ball Story update with the Tech Goku getting an Awakening and a new free-to-play Krillin. Obviously the new category, all the stages here with all the medals and everything. Um, and then we have, uh, yes, there you go. Tickets. So this shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone because Global seems to just be getting tickets for everything now, which is great. Obviously, if you're someone who spends money on the game, tickets are always very good value. I'll always mention this, like... For people who don't get it when I say that, even though you can summon with tickets and get nothing, remember you can summon with stones and get nothing. It's all RNG at the end of the day. But if you're going to summon on a specific banner, for the price that it costs to buy tickets, you get more units from those summons than you do if you just bought stones to summon on the banner. Now, obviously, if you buy stones and then you get really lucky and you pull a unit first multi, you can keep the rest of those stones for another banner. But if you're going to summon on a specific banner, the tickets are always good value. And I always see people in the comments and in the stream that end up pulling the unit off of like the ticket packs. So for me, I will always, as someone who spends, I will always get the tickets and use them first. Because then if I pull the unit off the tickets, especially if it's a unit like the androids that I'm not super crazy about, you know, going in for dupes and all that kind of stuff, it then means all the rest of the stones that I have uh, can then be saved for whatever's coming next. So obviously that's not helpful to anyone who's free to play, but if you're someone who spends a little bit on the game here and there and you do want to summon for the androids, tickets is probably the best value way to get summons on that banner. Interestingly, we've also got the uh, heart candy thing, so they're going to do the thing they always do with the uh, certain few peppy gals. I think they added a few other non-peppy gals units as well, but the ability to get a bunch of free units from the shop uh, by just completing a bunch of very easy missions. None of them are particularly crazy units, so nothing that insane, but I'll probably do a video talking about it once it's actually live in the game. But yeah, tickets are going to be a thing, as they pretty much always are for banners now going forward. So going back to the banner, I feel like it's probably no surprise to most people that I would say this banner is going to be a skip for most people. Now, if I had to have a bunch of multiple tiers for banner, uh, banners and of course the bottom one would be super easy skip I don't think this one would be quite in that tier just because of the future potential for the androids like I said once the tournament of power team is super buffed from the anniversary these guys won't have come back so if you haven't got them in your box when the anniversary happens you're not going to have them for that team but then at the same time, you want to be saving for all the crazy stuff that's going on during the anniversary and not going into the anniversary with a whole chunk less stones because you use them summoning for the int androids. Because I can tell you, for me, again, like as a creator, I'll summon for these guys, I'll do a showcase for them, I'll take them into a couple of different events, and then chances are I, c I probably won't use them until the anniversary and we get all those buffs. Unless the Saiyan Day character is a Tournament of Power character, which would be interesting. Um... But yeah, otherwise they're probably not going to see a huge amount of use. So I would imagine that for most people, this banner is a pretty easy skip. Like I say, if you're someone who spends a little bit, maybe try out the tickets if you want to try your luck and scratch that summon itch. But if you're free to play or you don't spend much on the game at all, I would say you probably do want to skip this banner. Maybe pick up God Goku with red coins if you can and you don't have them already. If the banner does have discounts with like a guaranteed featured, usually the way that works out is we end up getting all three steps for like 100 stones or something. Then I would say maybe if you can spare the 100 stones, that would potentially be worth it. Um, but even if they do that and the third step is guaranteed featured, if they take God Goku off the banner, I feel like it becomes even less worth summoning on. So I would have to say be very careful about that if you are planning to summon. So for Global, unfortunately, we won't know what the banner change is if there is one at all until it actually goes live in the game. But as I've already said, I will be live streaming when the banner comes out. So hopefully I will see you guys there. Come check out the stream. Come hang out. Uh, you can watch me summon on the banner so you don't have to. Hopefully it will go uh, nice and smoothly and we won't have to dump a ton of stones. Um, but yeah, hopefully I will see you guys at that live stream. So let me know what you guys think down below. Are you going to summon for the androids? Is it an easy skip for you? 
Uh, are you saving everything for the anniversary? Are you saving with the potential to maybe dip into Say and Day? Let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been the Master Ningen. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store, and I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.